There's a quote by a guy named Neil Cole, uh, who wrote a book on discipleship, and it's kind of like, like, buckle up for this one. Uh, it's kind of been like gutting me a little bit uh, as I've been processing it over the last summer or so. Um, but here's what he says about discipleship. He says, ultimately, each church will be evaluated by only one thing, its disciples. Your church is only as good as her disciples. It does not matter how good your praise, preaching, programs, or property are. If your disciples are passive, needy, consumeristic, uh, and not moving in the direction of radical obedience, the church isn't good. And I think about how much time and energy and work and thought that not just I myself, but I know that many churches put into all the other categories. And yet this seems to dial straight, right into the truth of the matter, that Jesus was launching disciples that would be radically obedient um, not radically popular, um, not radically wealthy, not radically intelligent or educated, but obedient. And this, you guys, at the end of the day, is all Jesus is going to judge. This is it. This is it. And let me tell you, I don't know if there's been anything more convicting in the last several years for my life. And uh, I, I tend to be a little bit codependent at times. I like to be liked. Who doesn't like to be liked? I enjoy being liked. And I enjoy telling people things that they enjoy hearing. But when I ponder and consider the weight of what Jesus desires to do, I can't help overcome that Jesus desires to see disciples that are not living as people just being told what they want to hear, but that are receiving truth spoken in love to them. That would actually raise them up, that they might be the kinds of people receive the Holy Spirit and be sent into the world in the same way that Jesus himself was. This is how Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries get planted over every nation. When ordinary men and women simply come to moments with Jesus, receive the Spirit of God, and choose to go in response. It's very ordinary. It's very simple. It's not over any of our heads. Jesus took ordinary fishermen. He took young boys in our standards, men by theirs, boys by ours. John was the youngest of the disciples, and he was roughly around the age of 14 when he started following Jesus. And he's just convinced. You think of all the foolishness of the disciples. How many times Peter put his foot in his mouth? You think of Peter almost like ruining the whole crucifixion moment by starting a war like by chopping off a dude's ear in the Garden of Gethsemane. These guys were so slow. And Jesus was committed to them, that even after his resurrection, yet they still didn't quite get it. He's yet commissioning them to be the seedbed on top of which everything else gets built. So here's, uh, here's the three dynamics of this moment that I would love to see get renewed in your midst. I think that this fall is a bit of a unique moment. It feels like a post-pandemic moment, a truly post-pandemic moment. It feels like the smoke of the last few years is starting to really clear. But what I am deeply hesitant to do is just press control C, control V on what 2019 was. I want to press into all that God has for me, all that God has for my church, for my small group. I want it all. I don't want to just go back to whatever I thought was normal. I want to follow Jesus into whatever he has now. And it feels like now is a moment of renewal. Everything in me has wanted to call uh, my church back to radical discipleship. The only problem is I just have this real ax to grind with the word radical, because I think what we call radical, Jesus calls reasonable. <laughs> like, like, so, like we want to categorize it, because the second you say radical, then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, the 1% of Christians, they'll, they'll jump into that, the real Jesus freaks. They'll go for that, and everyone else can just ride the coattails of normal. But I think Jesus just calls things reasonable. You know you do crazy things when you're in love, right? And Jesus just calls us to love God with everything that we've got. And when you're most deeply, deeply in love with someone, your life will probably look a little radical. It'll be very inconvenienced. You'll do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. And it's not because you're pressured to or you're trying to perform or you're trying to out-radical someone else, you know what I mean? It's just you're in love. And it just happens. I would love to see our discipleship renewed. And I think Jesus lays out the pattern time and time again. You can see it all throughout the three years he invested into his disciples, but I just see it so beautifully summarized right here in this passage. 
as he's about to launch them out into the world. So here's the three things I want to unpack. I want to unpack being with Jesus, receiving from Jesus, and then unlocking the doors. Being with Jesus, receiving from Jesus, and then unlocking the doors. Hey, thanks for checking out our YouTube video today. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in with us. Before you take off, please hit the like button. And if you want more of this content and you want to be notified when we put out new videos, hit the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications right next to it. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.